Hey guys, it's Jay Bell. It's another episode of Girl Talk with Jay Bell. And obviously that's me, your host here. Uh, my next guest here on episode six is a very lovely woman who wears many hats. She's not only a mother, uh, she's also a singer and a media personality. I met her while, while I moved back home to North Carolina and I lived in Charlotte. I met her through mutual friends. Awesome person, beautiful personality, and a beautiful singing voice, to say the least. Okay, Lily <laughs> Blanche is Thank awesome. you. Hi. And I love you get my name right. <laughs> I had to make sure. I was like, Blanche. Is it Blanche or Blanche? Blanche. Okay. Yeah. How are you? I'm Gucci Bandana. Oh, wait a minute now. I'm a little old. <laughs> So you, you gotta break that down. You are not old, girl. <laughs> you are. Said, that's new. What What does that mean? Oh, it's just like so. I always say like I'm Gucci. Like people are like, oh, what's up? You okay? You good? I'm like, yeah, I'm Gucci. And then you know, Soulja Boy had the uh, Gucci Ben Dena. Gucci Gucci oh. Ben Dena. So <laughs> I'm just been saying that I'm Gucci Ben Dena. Okay. So. I learned something new. Okay, maybe I'm just a little out of the loop. I know Gucci, I knew what Gucci mean, good, but the Gucci bandana, I was like, wait. I'm just weird. Nah, I'm sorry. No, I'm going to start using that on people so they can look at me crazy, too. Like, what how are you doing, <laughs> Gucci bandana? Gucci bandana. Okay. Well, you're glowing, honey. You got the, the new hairdo. I, I see you Thank before. You. Yeah, you blonde, got the short pixie cuts. Yeah, I'm growing it out. It's actually, it's my like one year anniversary of cutting my hair. Really? Um, Why did you cut your hair a year ago? Okay, so a year ago, um, it was a lot of personal things like happening. Um, but the whole 2019 was just a hot mess. Mm. It literally was a hot mess just starting from, I mean, it was on to a good start. Um, I was traveling more. I was performing more out of the state um but then nip died and then just <laughs> a lot of things i went into homicide last year and um i want to say after i witnessed the homicide like that it was like right after that is when i got my all my hair cut off oh wow yeah um why well, I, I came across a homicide so i heard the gunshots and then um it was a it was a very like weird story. It was went from a traffic accident to one of the people like killing another person who they hit. It was like a stolen car. It was just crazy. And then I ended up leaving the media magazine company that I was with. Um, but prior to that, so that was the first thing to go. And then the homicide, and then um i lost my instagram page so all my fans and stuff like people are still finding me oh. like day so that's why i have a new page so i don't know if you like recognize yeah. like you aren't following me anymore but people are still finding me like people are seeing me in public and they think like i blocked them or unfollow them wow yeah so i'm like you can't, huh yeah. i was like yeah 2019 was full of trash but I, I'm like, you didn't notice from the least amount of followers that I have now from compared to the followers that I had before. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, I'm pretty sure you can like tell the difference. But um, yeah, but 2020 <laughs> <laughs> ain't got nothing on 2019. <laughs> it didn't, but now it started. I mean, a lot of my, some of my friends have passed. Some from, some from. Uh, friends, family members dying from COVID. Um, yeah, just people getting killed. A couple of people I know are like either getting killed or they're getting into accidents and getting killed. I'm not even gonna lie, like it's so hurtful. Yeah, hurtful. So all of that mixed in one, I just felt like I needed a new change and I was trying to revamp the brand. And so it's what I needed to, you know, yeah. And it looks good on you. It looks good on you. I'm, I'm glad that you you gone through the you're going through the healing process and really trying to rebuild. Because yeah, I definitely noticed that you hadn't been posting anymore. And I was just like, well, well, maybe she's just taking a break or something. You know, people take breaks off of social media. Mm -hmm. 
then all of a sudden I saw your page again and I was like is this the same person so I had to look <laughs> but now I look at pages before I let people add like I add them or whatever and I saw it was you so I was like oh okay I was like, well, maybe she's just going through a change or something. And I was like, I like what I see. So I just went along with it. And now we're here. So, I mean, you look like you're a lot happier. You're glowing and shit and <laughs> doing your things. Let's go ahead and jump into this. Let's, my first question to you is, let's talk about your background a little bit. Your childhood, what led you up to starting your music career. Let's, let's start there. Um, so as a kid... I just sat on the porch and sang. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds like hella weird, but like one of my first memories of me singing was like on my mom's back porch. Um, so like if she used to fuss at me, I would just like start singing or I would go outside and sing. But my Nana, she always had me watching musicals. So I love, like my favorite musical or off-Broadway show was Cats and then Fame and... So she used to always take me to the um, local theater and I would always get to see the off-Broadway shows. So that's one. And um, my mom has always been kind of like theatrical. Like for a little bit, she um, she went to CPCC, but I always saw her um, recording videos in front of a green screen while she was at the community college. And um, my mom always sang, but like her voice is kind of like melodic. It's not like riff running and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like a both of both her and my nana just have like this soothing voice, I guess. Like my nana sung like Mary Poppins, Frank Sinatra style type, and my mom was like the R and B, diva chick, Janet Jackson, Mary J Blige, Mariah Carey. Like so, those you know that's where that background comes from. So it's kind of like musical mixed with R and B, and I just always saw my mom like around entertainment. So she was like on choirs and um, she also worked for a radio station. And so that's like my musical background. Now, what's the the defining moment for you that you knew that you wanted a career in music? Like kind of to. I've always wanted to, I always wanted a a career in music. I was a little bit scared. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, I wouldn't say that I was scared. But I hate it when people would say, oh, sing for this person. And I'm just like, I don't want to sing for the, that person. Like, like even I'm like, a, yeah, a person personal, like even to this day, I still don't like doing that. Now getting on a stage, that's where I want to be. I remember first grade, I danced to uh, the Supreme. I think we sang to the Supremes when I was in first grade. That was one of the first like, shows and we wore these big old t-shirts and I loved it and then my fifth grade year I remember um and even before then just little different things leading up so when I was older like I always wanted to be on stage first grade was the or maybe kindergarten or first grade was the supremes and then I remember like third grade second third grade I uh sang a song for our church's uh anniversary I another friend's parents they owned a business here and they had a talent show I was in it and I was just my nana always had a um video camera she always had a video recorder and cameras and stuff like that and I was just always in front of it so I always wanted it Mm -hmm. it was just like how like it was just like the how but I always knew like it was just something that I wanted to do because everybody said I was extra (laughs) it's always (laughs) It's always those words like, well, I'll take this extra and I'll show you what I can do with it, right? Now, um, working in music, uh, you're all, I don't think a lot of people know because you, you don't share it on your social media, which is it's, it's very understandable. You're also a mother. You have, oh, yeah. Uh, you have how many, I, I'm not sure how many kids you have, but I definitely know that you, you are a mother. Um, how do you balance? motherhood with pursuing your career in music um it's really hard I mean it's hard but it's not hard I think because I'm single it's easier Mm -hmm. as much as I love to get married and I would love a spouse I think it would be very hard if I were in a relationship so it's a little bit easier for me to just focus on the boys and me 
But whatever you want, you can do it. I remember when my second son, I have two children, I have two boys. But when my second son was born, I remember recording in his booth. He was still breastfeeding. And I was breastfeeding as I was recording something. I was I was doing a hook on somebody's song. And I was in the booth just breastfeeding and like singing on the mic. Um, but my oldest son, <clears throat> when he was younger, he's always been, they've always been around it. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't a thing. Like they just knew, okay, we're going to a studio. My oldest son, he's always been in the studio with me all the time. I mean, even if it's late nights. When I was working at Streets, um, at the time, I think he was like 10. He was 10 at the time, and my youngest son was two, one and a half, two. He wasn't even two yet when I started being, when I was interning for Streets. And I would have them, when I would do, like, graphics in the back room or do whatever, I'd be there late at night, and they'll be sleeping in the program director's office. So it's kind of like they work with me. Cause it's like, hey, if we can, if you can let me do this, then I can let you do that. So when, when my oldest son danced for the NBA team here, mm-hmm. it was like we all know that we're helping each other. Like they're both talented. They both have great voices, and I mean, they can sing, but they haven't like delved delved into singing. But like my youngest son, he could do voiceovers. His easily, he could easily do voiceovers. And my oldest son has just always been a dancer, but I, he can sing. I was gonna ask that. Do the do the sons <laughs> want to pursue the entertainment industry also, following their mother's footsteps? Yeah, I kind of really just want them to like work in science or be leaders or like politicians or whatever because those things are near and dear to me. Because when I was younger, I did also. I, okay, so my life, mm-hmm. it was you're gonna be uh, acting is my first love. Mm-hmm. So acting, singing, radio, or be a news anchor. Those are the only things that I have ever wanted to full-on pursue so I'm just like with them I kind of want them to take the traditional route but I mean I guess it's in them you know just the spontaneity the um the creative aspect of it Mm -hmm. so they have it and my oldest son like his father is a musician he plays the organ plays the piano he screams on the trumpet like he reads music he writes music and I mean, not just writing lyrics. He's not a lyrical writer, but I he mean, the, the note. No. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it's in him, but I don't think I've like pushed that on him. But I'm pretty sure, like, if he just did it, it, it would come natural to him. So, but. Well, speaking of writing, uh, I'm pretty sure that as a singer, you also write a lot of your songs. What's, what's kind of the. <laughs> Why do you make that funny? Oh, yeah, I'm like, what to ask? <laughs> What's the process? Like, what is your muse when you're writing these songs? Where do you pull it from? She said muse. Okay. You know, I, have, <laughs> I have various ways that I um pull. So one, I don't mind getting writers to write for me. I don't mind sitting in a room writing with other people, but I have learned that I have to have a split sheet in the room if I'm writing with other people or if anybody puts any type of even if they just give one word for it Mm -hmm. like oh I'm getting half and you don't want to come into that problem but naturally when I write for myself um it's so funny because I just posted this not too long ago but I'm either driving in my car Mm -hmm. or I'm in the shower mostly I'm in the shower when songs come to me because I'm singing to myself in the shower right um, so I like sit when I shower, which is weird, but <laughs> I've been doing that for years and um, I might have like a melody in my head and I always take my phone to the showers. I really need a waterproof phone for real because I'll just be like, um, yeah, so most of my songs I put in the recorder. Mm-hmm the recorder of the phone and then I might say a few words I might say two to three sentences and then after that I might come across a beat or I have a beat in my head and I'll make somebody make it or I find a beat and I'll put it to that beat so for example um Tussie Slide 
when I did the freestyle for Tissy Slide with Drake's Tissy Slide, mm -hmm. um, the first part is he don't text me in the morning. He don't text me good afternoon. He just hit me when he horny. Late night acting like he want me. He said, baby, it's yours. I can't tell. So that part, that was about like my quarantine base. And I just had that in my head. So when I went in the studio, I was feeling some type of way. And I came across Cold Summer on YouTube. And I know people were like doing a challenge. So I was like, I'm, I was just pissed. So the lyrics for Cold Summer, like, I was just freestyling it, and then I wrote it down. But, of course, Quarantine Band inspired that song also. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also a little it – it's, it's beef that I had about a situation. Mm -hmm. I didn't really express it to the people who – you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but it was – so Cold Summer was about, like, the Quarantine Band situation and then really just me being fed up with people and, a, like, not particular – particularly guys, but like people who were supposed to be rocking with me with my music and didn't. So it was basically like I'm coming hard. So with Tissy Slide, I, I recorded Cold Summer and I had maybe like 10 minutes left in the studio. And I was like, cause I think I booked like two hours, an hour, two hours. And then Cold Summer got a race and I had to redo it. But anyway, um, I was like, let me just, what, what's something I can hop on as a freestyle? And I'm like, mm, I don't even know how I'm going to start this off. But then I had that melody, that that line from when I was in the shower. Mm -hmm. And then it spit it. And then I hurried, I hurried up and wrote it. But it was all from Quarantine Bay. So, like, anybody can be my muse. It literally is just, like, how I'm feeling. Or if somebody says a word, and I might go off that word and just write something. But it's, like, the either the melody or a situation in words, like, come to me. That is, um, that's a process. That's definitely a process. It is, but Hove, Hove said, if you, if you can't, if you listen to a song and you can't write to it in 15 minutes, then mm. it's, wrong. but, and so I'm telling you, it's truth in that. If I can't find a melody, like I can usually hear a beat, I'll hum a melody and then I write to my melody. So if I can't find like a melody to a song and it doesn't come to me naturally, it's probably not going to come. That's talent. That's very, that's talent. Um, if you don't mind me asking, because you did just sing some lyrics. And I was going to ask this later. Do you mind singing some from Cold Summer? Like, I want to hear this. <laughs> if you can uh, Cold Summer is, how Cold Summer go? Had a quarantine, babe. He was in it like a thong. Like my blind hair, like thong to thong. Blind bending like I'm Cisco, smooth convos, yeah, waxy like some Crisco. He was petty, but I'm petty. He gon' miss sucking, he slip slurping it up like spaghetti. Yeah, it's COVID 19 and 20. Shit looking real Armageddon. Woo! Chat. You gotta hear the rest on SoundCloud. <laughs> yes. or, you can, or you can see the video on my page. I have a video for Cold Summer and I have a video for. Sissy slide. I actually kind of sang that really high. I could have sang it lower, but yeah, you can watch. Sounded good to me. Thank you. Damn, very, very much. Now, in this day and time, <laughs> in this day and time, um, a lot of people in the entertainment industry have multiple streams of income. You know, streams of revenue coming in. We we find different roles in between what we're really working towards. And at one point you were a media correspondent for uh, Level 21 Magazine TV. How was that experience? What did it teach you while you were working in that role? <laughs> the face you made. I'm scared. Ooh, uh, God, and then you said the company. Okay. Um, one, it taught me um, that you just go for whatever you want. Because I will say the owner, <clears throat> you can't take it from her. When she wants something or she wants someone to, like she wants to uh, interview somebody or, you know, get access to some things, she made it happen. Because uh, like, uh, what, did, what did Tiger King came out? Yeah. Uh, 
Tiger King lad that came out this year. Last year we already interviewed um Don, who was at the Myrtle Beach Safari. Wow. So we were kind of like before the the whole thing. Yeah, um so I guess being on the cusp of like new things for sure like there's no limit. Like you can interview. I mean, but I already knew that from the radio station, but really like being out being your own entity entity mm-hmm. outside of like a major network or you know radio station or whatever television station like she really was doing it so that um also always have your stuff together know um know what you bring to the table so <clears throat> and uh play your position and leverage what you bring to the table and make it clear that you know what you're bringing to the table in any situation so that air all parties can be clear of your contribution, you know? Um, and so I kind of like now when I'm dealing with people or whatever, I kind of make it clear, like I'm a very humble person, but I, I in the past, I don't think I kind of really spoke up of what it was that I provided. And so people kind of think like, it's not a thing until you know, you got to show people. <clears throat> um, so I learned that. Um, I also learned um, even when you have opportunities, because that was a great experience, a great opportunity. I met a lot of great people. Like, I will say she she built a phenomenal team. She built a phenomenal team. Um, and being able to have loyalty, because um, I did leave um the company however she built a relationship and rapport with others and some of those people are still with her and so that's something that i haven't um been able to cultivate Mm -hmm. for my own brand and i think um she's done a great job at doing that so i can't even i can't even take that from her so just you know always evolve and also be uh be strong enough and risky enough to step out on faith and to go for something higher. Don't ever think like you're not going to be anything after you leave something. Like you really have to push yourself. Cause I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like when I left, it was like, well, you have your music. Um, but will you be able to get into certain doors? And I'm like, my talent alone is good, but it's just like, you got to go harder now. Yeah. So you know, just being a risk take, taker and, and uh, evolving, getting better. You got to get better so you can be undeniable. D. Renee taught me that. Just always be undeniable. Mm-hmm. So even now, I'm having to tell myself that now, like, just to go to the next level. So, but yeah, that's what I learned from that. And other streams of income, um, I write more now. I was doing a lot of writing for her, for that magazine. Um, and yeah, and on the low, I'm a librarian. So, but yeah, if you want, yeah, it'll be, yeah, it'll be six years. I've been a librarian in January. Wow. Yeah, but people don't know that. <laughs> what are they gonna learn now <laughs> when they listen? <laughs> well, yeah. learning all of those yeah. things. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I was oh, like, okay. I was gonna say, well, well, learning all those things. Do you see yourself doing more television, te- more television in the future? Yes, I do want to do television in the future. When I was younger, I used to be like, oh, I don't want to act first because I don't think I can go from acting into singing because I felt like they never like respected actors who acted first and went into singing. Mm -hmm. I much sing right now and go into acting because I love the two so much. Like they're my favorite, but definitely I do see television, but I would like to have a, um, a long and great career in music before I go into television. So there's some work to be done, but it's feasible. So okay. now um social media is obviously a huge factor these days and how we present ourselves and our brand, you know, it's a catch twenty two is what I say. You know, it can be fun. You're using it to build yourself you know, build your brand and, and kind of show your talents to the world, but it can get very exhausting. How do you balance your public, um, 
persona with your private life? Luckily, like I said, luckily I don't have a boyfriend, don't have a husband. Um, it's quarantine. And, but some people don't understand it. It's, you're not going to be able to balance it. I mean, you can, but I don't know because I'm never really, I, people don't really call me or text me and I, one, don't really even like, I like being online, but I kind of don't like being online. I like being online to see other things. I don't like exposing myself. I feel like I'm too out there. Um, so you'll see me posting my story more, but like just this, past weekend I was hanging with friends and um people really never see me out so if I go out like I'm out but I'm like oh let me show somebody a picture because usually I'm in like jeans and a t-shirt but I love looking sexy nice but I feel like people don't ever really get to see me in dresses right and so I, um went out to eat and I have so much crap on my phone I was trying to like delete stuff but like my friend was just like um get off the phone and I'm like we can walk to the car. I'm behind you guys. Just, you know, and you just got to be around people who understand that your online presence, the people who are your fans who listen to your music, mm -hmm. people who are part of your life, you have to be surrounded by people to know that there's a reason why you're online. Um, if, if you can't balance that, then somebody got to go. And it's like, are you going to give me money? Are you going to pay for somebody to do my social media for me. You're going to pay for a cameraman to follow me and do this stuff for me. If you're not going to do that, then I can't help you. Right. So I do what I can when I can. Uh, my children, if they see me on the phone, like I'm like, guys, I'm not just on here chilling. I'm commenting because you got to stay active because everything's like about algorithms now. Oh so, God. you know, the balance is people understand somebody your family, friends, whatever, understanding you. Like, my mom is always like, you're always on the phone. I'm like, I'm not always on the phone. <laughs> when I want to have a long time with you, you're not even paying me any attention. So it's kind of, it's like a basketball player. You know that basketball player is going to be gone. So would you rather be in my presence and me be around you and be able to talk to you and still do what I'm doing? Or do you want me to go home and me text you? What do you want to do? So that's the balance. Mm. That's a good way of putting it, though. Yeah, definitely. People don't understand it. That's not in our field or in any field that has to deal with social media. And so that, that's sure. a good way of putting it. Um, a little bit earlier, you talked about the influences that your Nana and your mother had as far as like when it comes to R&B music. What are some of your influences that you kind of look to? I always hate this question. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Because I have so many different influences, but uh, you mean as far as music or influence as in what? Like what keeps me going? What keeps making music. me want to? Music. Music. Yeah. I'm going to just say hands down Beyonce. I never used to want to say that, but I'm starting to come to the realization that influentially, she, I'm like, ugh. I wish I could be Beyonce. Like, seriously, to be honest, Beyonce has been popping since my, I want to say, sixth or seventh grade year of middle school from Destiny's Child. The first album? It will say my name and all that. Uh -huh. um, around the time, I feel like Spike Lee's, the girl, the girls, the four girls in the church, like when that premiered on like HBO, they were showing that. Uh -huh. I was like around the time, and I just remember getting in the car hearing Say My Name, and it was so popping. I performed Say My Name, my <laughs> seventh grade or eighth grade year talent show. Uh -huh. And I messed that up. But I was like, y'all, we got to sing Justin Child, saying that. Um, and just throughout high school, like even my most fondest moments, I just remember singing Beyonce. Like I remember when I got my first... Uh, my uncle had sent some like Tim's down. They were blue, like baby blue. And you know, like the broccolis, but they were like baby blue and like dark blue. My uncle had sent them down. I just remember listening to um, that baby boy, you stay on my mind. That. 
Or when I was cheering my senior year and I was singing, meet myself and none, it's all I got in the end. It just, I mean, every year, like it was always something. But like back in the day, it was mainly like Mariah Carey. I used to always try to hear her notes all the time. Um, I was in first grade. My One of my earliest memories of listening to Mariah was when I was in first grade. And I was building a tent in after school. And I just remember um, singing, what was that? Uh, Someday. Oh, her very first album? That was like. Uh, 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 right. I mean, from with her and Boys to Men to. So it's always. And then my mom always was playing. Um, uh, she always had Mary J. Blige, Janet Jackson. So I was always like singing those songs, like the Velvet Rope Tour. Mm. I was, she would watch that on VHS over and over and over. So it was kind of like, I just wanted to like be out there and really, you know, mm-hmm. but then Ashanti, I know people always give me flack for loving Ashanti, but Ashanti was the first CD that my Nana ever bought me. And it was my, freshman year of high school and she was like um here's cc which is my nickname she was like here's cc i bought you this i had never asked her to buy me a cd and she just bought it out of nowhere and i was just so in love with that and then my sophomore year i got um the bootleg (laughs) (laughs) second album and all i did was like run it up and then a marie my freshman year and sophomore year that's all i was like singing so those would be like my t- all of those singers that I named, mm-hmm. like all of them style wise, love Selena, but all of those women, especially just, I just have to say Beyonce because definitely like she just makes me want to go hard and just go get it. And it's just like, oh my God, she nonstop consistent. That's, that's I, true. Nobody as consistent, but you know, people used to look, oh, she's of the devil and all this other crap, Illuminati crap. So I used to be. <laughs> I hate to be like, I love Beyonce. <laughs> now, I don't say I'm beehive only because I just love her voice. It's like, I've never been the type to just like buy every single thing that she has made. But as far as songs, mm-hmm. if I think like that only her albums are one of the ones that I can say, I know the songs I can sing it. So. Wow. Now you said <laughs> Selena style wise. For people that may who are, who are listening to this, they might not know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking about. The Tejano Selena <laughs> that died in 1996. Salinas! Right? Salinas. Anything was Salinas. Why did you Anything. choose her? Oh, go ahead. I don't know. I'm listening. Oh, oh why did you choose her as your, your style inspiration? Man, first of all, even voice. Because I'll be driving. Her voice is so... Soulful. Like... I can't even, I don't know. I, I remember I was uh, somewhere, I had a show and uh, the, the piano player's girlfriend, uh, she was like, Selena, Ashanti. And I'm like, yes, I can sing their behinds off. And Selena just had the voice and the, um, the just elegance. Mm-hmm. Just, she was a sweetheart. Like, I'm a sweetheart. Like, I know people think I'm like hella hard and I'm like super boss, but I've had to be that way to protect myself because people don't think that really sweet people exist. And I'm that kind of person. Like, I just want to just hug you, laugh with you, you know, lift my sisters up and all that. But people just really take advantage of that. But she was her soul just, you can see it from video. And then even, I mean, Jennifer Lopez did such a good job at playing her part when I was younger mm-hmm. because I just remember I would just cry. It's how I watched that movie. <laughs> I know. I cry. She really did do it. Um, but style-wise, just the way that she commanded, like, the band and the way she stood and then how the clothes, it, they would fit on her. It was like it was sexy but not overbearing. Like, it wasn't too sexy it was just tasteful sexy and i love tasteful sexy like it's nothing like elegant sexy so that's why i say her 
he dies deep into it. I never even thought about that. You know, I've discovered Selena from the movie. Mm -hmm. And so when the movie came out and I was listening to her music, now, mind you, I don't know one look of Spanish like that. Like, I know a little words here and there. But her music, like you said, it just really, like, touched touched me and then the commanding of the stage and all that so I was obsessed with her for a very long time and now even looking back the what she has presented or what she has uh, her legacy has affected people it's just like it's crazy how big her legacy has become over the years even bigger now than it was when she first passed away and so that's mm -hmm. that's really nice to hear because you don't hear a whole lot of um, black women that are in this industry talk about brown women you know tahano singers that influenced them and so my next question to you i'm glad that you mentioned that and how sweet and you know all this other stuff um the state of r&b is constantly going up and down we know this and um the biggest struggles are with black women like the way that they're treated in the music business, you know, how they're presented over sexualized, which is why I'm glad you said something about the classic sexy look about Selena. Do you believe that black women in the music industry as a whole are still fighting and struggling to be heard and seen? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I don't want to. I don't want to say they're struggling to be heard or seen because they're heard and seen by those who want to see them. Mm. Um, but as far as people coming out to say that they like them, just like it was very hard for me. I mean, I said I loved Beyonce and Hove on the low, but because I came from a very, uh, my mom was like a super Bible thumper, even though she experienced the world. She just had scriptures all, everywhere, all over the house. My Nana was more subtle with it, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like people don't allow duality. And so when I say duality, it's just like you can't, people can't fathom you being a wholesome person and uh, outwardly expressing your sexual self. So me, you know, uh, with that being my past, like, the Bible thumping type of situation. And my mom, you know, she had a risque past. And in my mind, I always said, I will never be like her. I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to do that. I felt like it was a stigma because other people said it was a stigma. Mm. And so I think we're in the age where people are, it's just like, if you don't rock with it, then you just don't rock with it. But it's like, I needed to embrace some type of sexual side for me to evolve into the, the, the woman that I am now. And it was very hard. And it took my breakup in 2015 for me to take pole fitness, for me to get out my feminine side. Because I had suppressed this femininity. And I think people forget, like, and I mean, I think they've just put a stigma on the word sexualize. Right. And it's feminine is what it is it's femininity it's natural femininity mm -hmm. it's power um and i think when people take control over their power or hone like understand their power um others get afraid of it and so i feel like now people women ha are starting to embrace um their sexual side like these are mothers these are uh wives and it's okay because you got people who might be all out here or whatever, but they, they're not having sex with everybody. It's just how they want to present themselves in that time. But I don't think people should be shunned for it. So I feel like there was hypersexuality within the industry, but it was from male artists. Mm. And I, you had little Kim, you had Foxy. But it was just like, don't touch me. Even when you see these women performing and they might have their booties out and they might be shaking. But if you try to touch them, they're like, cut it off. Step back. This is me. Respect what I'm doing. Don't touch me. You're not allowed to. And when you make boundaries, people get mad because you made a boundary. 
but it's ours to have just like our black like we want to say the n-word no you can't use the n-word we can use it but you can't yeah we're going to be sexual are you going to uh sexualize who i am and take advantage of who i am and mistreat me women aren't doing that no more they're saying it in their lyrics but as far as like really you know i mean you got the the new video vixens that are in these videos but as far as the women honing in on our own sexuality yeah, we can do that so i don't know that's a <laughs> no that's, crazy. that's a crazy it, though you know but i mean and i teach girls you know i talk to teen girls i used to be a pr director for a media company that you know was into media literacy and why they have certain things and the hyper femininity in the black community with males and things like that and those are certainly are things that to be aware of mm -hmm. and you but you have to know your own uh feelings and you have to know your own past or why you're intrigued by certain things like for me i go into a strip club strippers inspire me they don't inspire me to strip they actually inspire me to be powerful mm -hmm. and proclaim who i am I don't go to a strip club to see girls strip. I love to see them take their power and say, this is what I am and you're going to pay me. Like this is, you know, just, right. it's just a confidence that strippers exude. But you tell somebody that they don't understand it. They don't so get it. They, in their eyes, they just see, that's a stripper riding on the pole, taking money. That's all they see. They don't see the environment yeah. behind it and how much courage it takes for that woman to do what she's doing on you know on that stage like that or even doing right. lap dances with people unknown people in the crowd and right I, you know it is funny because i never thought about it like that because I, I i ain't gonna lie i used to go to strip clubs but i go to see the women strip and have fun you go with your guy have a little fun afterwards whatever but the way you just described it it says a lot more because it is a very empowering thing you got the command attention you commanded the attention of these men and even some women to watch you and then you get them to empty their pockets. I think I need to go in the strip in a little bit. <laughs> Make some money. Hey. That's <laughs> funny. Okay, so now you just recently released a new single called Sweet. Whew. Ooh, I took a listen. I was like, I'm all flooded in my feelings. Now I want to go out and fall in love with somebody. Um, oh, my beautiful, God. <laughs> beautiful song. Beautiful, beautiful song. Are we expecting an EP soon? Are you working on one? Yeah, so I released Here You Go, the songs you wanted me to stream, which were all the songs that a lot of people wanted to stream on, like Apple Music and things like that. Um, I am working on something new. I won't be able to release anything until a couple of months, but I'm definitely going to be releasing at the top of next year. Um, so you, I mean, you might catch me doing little freestyles on my page, but I've just, okay. um, okay. <clears throat> so, but yeah, I'm definitely working on new music. Um, but I will say with all of the deaths occurring and different things, it's really taken a toll on my mental. Mm. And, um, I'm at a state right now where it's kind of like, I want some love <laughs> like, or, or, you know, a solid companion. Um, I mean, I don't text anybody. I don't have anybody who I can just flirt with them. I, you know, or talk to on the phone. I don't have that. So it would be great to kind of have, I mean, I don't necessarily need a significant other, um, but I feel like low key I'm psyching myself out of that because I just have never <laughs> come across somebody who could, you know, but I've always wanted to be married and things like that. But the last couple of years, I'm just like, well, maybe I don't. Um, and just like Mary, maybe breakups fuel lyrics, but, um, I mean, Quarantine Bay inspired like eight songs. Ooh. Four are out, two are half written, and the other two need to, I have the beats for them. So it's kind of weird, but I mean, he's cool. We don't talk anymore. <clears throat> I mean, it is what it is, but like, just, 
<laughs> I don't know if I find like the beats for it, but I don't want to rush anything. Right. Take your time. Oh, I don't rush anything. Yeah. And the next project is definitely going to be like official tissue. So I might make some little freestyles, like one minute freestyles for my page, which I'm just telling you that. Well, but um, on, on the podcast in October, so everybody going to hear <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah I mean we'll see but I'm taking my time and um yeah I can't wait to release some stuff because I was very surprised that my four quarantine songs I actually love them because I don't think people got to hear that side of my voice Mm -hmm. and there's also another element of my voice that I want to get out but I just haven't found the right beats and um the 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 uh the production that I want. So there's a lot of evolution. There's a lot of sounds that I want to come out that haven't come out yet. And it's just like, oh, I'm, I'm ready to like get it out. But something is definitely brewing. So it's so. all in God's timing. Was Sweet inspired by Quarantine Bay at the beginning? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I was like, well, then we can't listen to the we, we, we can listen to the song, but now we got to find our own Bay. So, who inspired Sweet? Okay, so Sweet. Um, me and the homie wrote that. The homie wrote the first court, the first verse, and I wrote the chorus and the second verse. Mm. Um, but the first verse kind of like inspired um just the rest of the song for me and honestly men not approaching me the men that i want to talk to not approaching me inspired that song so that song is basically about you know um me seeing a guy him seeing me i see you you see me Come holler at me. Mm. Like, you know, come talk to me. Do you want to know all the love inside of me? Sweet. And I mean, it's just come get me. Come say, yo, I like you and be undeniable. But you know, nowadays, you know, it's oh, it's like where's the whole package? You might be attracted to somebody, but they're trash, or they might be <laughs> they might be uh you might they might be sweet great person but you're not attracted to them yeah it's dang where my 80 20 at where my 80 need to find the the balance in there somewhere i feel you i totally 100 percent feel everything that you're saying i'm 35 years old and i'm like where is where is he where is he at like I think like hopefully somebody can hear the song and be like like come through but I don't know like me I don't like people leaving me on scene I don't like people like if you see something and then like you try to text me back hours later I ain't with it and I feel like people feel like they got to play hard to get with me I'm really just if I like you I like you oh I like you you like me we like each other okay let's get it popping but they might feel like, oh my gosh, am I gonna be with her forever? Nah, like <laughs> I'm a different person, like, and I like I much prefer dating somebody who's out of town so that when we're together we have quality, quality time. You know, but I don't know. I hate the dating world. Ah, well, it's gonna happen, it's gonna come. You know, you just gotta speak it into existence. I don't think anybody should be dating during COVID right now, the way it's spreading. So you have to just kind of be patient. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing. But as we close out, um, where do you see yourself in five years, career wise? Oh man. You know how you're always afraid to say where you want to be? And then it's kind of like, but you don't but you want to manifest it. Well, I'm just like taking my time with things, but in five years, like I mean, I would love I wanna be winning like Grammy Awards for either writing for people or Grammy Awards for my own music. I want to be in different movies internationally. I want my songs to be, you know, everywhere. One of my biggest things is to be like one of the most sampled. I think like right now James Brown is the most sampled voice mm-hmm. in time. So I would love to be sampled. Um, I want to be traveling the world. I want to have like these next five years just 
my voice being known worldwide and then like five years just like really honing in on breaking records because I'm thinking about all the records there and I'm like could I ever even break these records that people are doing like I mean like the baby just breaking records like Nikki Cardi and um they are making things so that seemed impossible possible right so I just want to be breaking crazy records, like breaking records, being the first. I would love, I've always wanted to be like, be the first to be doing major, major things. But, um, but yeah, definitely, you know, having my music in the pop world, R&B world and, you know, different parties. And then I also want to make like music for children. So Kids Bob and movies, not Kids Bob. <laughs> not Kids Bob, but I want to be like in movies. I want to, I want to have been, um, you know, it's far fetched, but if I could get a um, far fetched, you know, EGOT, get all them awards and even new awards, it would be great to have like certain new awards and to be like in our community mm-hmm. of our and like just have like major awards that we are known for only for our community that the whole world is just like watching I just want to create like break crazy records like I want to do stuff like that the baby has done that is like like, wow a female doing that for our city because I just don't you know since Sean Anderson I remember like being in New Jersey when I was like visiting and listening heard it all for like you know I feel like she's that but I don't feel like a female in Charlotte has broke the record that the baby has done. Yeah. Especially like in R&B film. I think now I'd be under like pop alternative R&B type. I don't like to be categorized, but yeah, I want to, yeah, I want to be like the first female out of this city just to really do major things. And if you and say the- it, it's going to be done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you say it, it's going to be done. It's going to happen. That's all that's to it. I can see it happening. (laughs) Last question for you. Uh, You have any words of wisdom for up and coming aspiring singers and entertainers? Mm. Well, you know what? What Chadwick just said basically i forgot how the saying goes but um take your time but don't waste your time you know things are gonna come as they are but i've always been grateful for every moment you gotta be grateful for every moment because now i find myself wishing like i was back at the street stays and not understanding and it like really took my friends to be like girl Shay, Shay, I don't know why I say Shay, but Shay told me, um, she was like, girl, you've done things that other people can't even imagine that they could do. And it's still people who aren't going after their dreams. And so just go after whatever you want to do, because my nana used to tell me when I was a little girl, she used to be like, just ask for it. If they say no, you already expected no. And if they don't say no, then you just got it. So it's just like, Go hard, man. Go hard. Don't waste time. And really just like build a legacy. Like if you left today, like what will people say about you? Did you help somebody? Like I try to, man, it's so much pie, synergetic synergy. It's every time people add to the pie, we all eat from the pie. Mm -hmm. So don't feel like you can't put somebody else on. So. Like pay it forward. Pay it forward. Yeah. Wow. Don't waste your time to pay for seeds, man. It's just little seeds you gotta just plant everywhere and like the harvest is gonna come, you know. I've been like blessed to, you know, get things and to me they're small. <laughs> they seem so small, but um on down the road I'll probably see like how big it was. I just want everybody around me to be successful. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong at all. Well, I want to thank you so much for being on my podcast. Uh, share your socials for all the new listeners. We want to build your followers right back up because you deserve it. You deserve all the teams, as they say. Thank you. Lily Goat Gruff on everything. Um, 
YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Lily Goat Gruff. My website will be up. It'll be Lily Goat Gruff. Um, I already got my domain for that. Um, but every social media, uh, Facebook is Lily Goat Gruff Music. Twitter, Lily, Lily Goat Gruff. My Gmail, <laughs> Lily Goat Gruff Music at gmail.com. Um, everything is Lily Goat Gruff and Lily and Blanche on everything. L- literally, it's hard to miss. Like, if you type in Lily and Blanche in Google and just put music, I'm going to pop up. You're everywhere. For sure. I love it. Thank you again for being on my show, guys. Uh, until, next time, <laughs> until next time, make sure you're streaming, subscribing, liking. Uh, I never say to follow me, but I'm, I'm starting to get into that process. Oh, also. yeah. Follow me on Instagram at Janelle Bell. That's J-N-E-L-L-E-B-E-L-L-E. And on Twitter at J Bell on air. I will catch you guys on the next episode. Holla.